record, but uh, our last, but certainly not least, interview of the evening, and that is with uh, Emily C. A. Snyder of Turn to Flesh and Hamlet to Hamilton. Let's invite uh, her to join us. Oh, that's not the right thing. Here we go. <coughs> So uh, we've been speaking, uh, as I said at the top of the broadcast, we've been speaking with several multi-hyphenates here tonight. There we Hello, go. <laughs> Emily, hey, how are hey, you? Hey, I'm well, how are you? I'm really um, big in this, in this, so we'll sort of hold it further away. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, <laughs> it, you know, the first couple of times I did this, I think I was doing this and I was all over the place. Right, right. So, <laughs> seasick. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I, th I think people, whenever they see me, get seasick anyway. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I've been enjoying tonight so much as well as oh, going back you. through the archives and seeing some of the other ones. It's been great. I'm very happy to hear that. So, uh, Emily, I was just starting to talk you up. Uh, you are what I would consider another multi-hyphenate. We had uh, Keith Hamilton Cobb on. He's an actor, a playwright, and mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, we had Melinda Hall. She's a producer, director, actor, and, and all the other stuff. And we mm -hmm. have you, who are, I think you are like 18 different uh, hyphens. Uh, you have a lot <laughs> going on. <laughs> You are an, uh, an actor, a playwright, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. director, a producer. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us about your, your uh, one-person uh, journey <laughs> through <laughs> every possible field <laughs> of Shakespeare. I don't know. I mean, I, so focus on Shakespeare? <laughs> Just whatever you want to talk about. So we, you, have two, sure. you have two big production outlets. You have Turn to yes. Flesh Productions. And just recently, you added Hamil Hamlet to Hamilton, the podcast. Yes. Okay, so tell us about, uh, first start with Turn sure. to Flesh. Sure. Well, actually, so Hamlet to Hamilton is under the umbrella of Turn to Flesh. Okay. Um, basically, uh, Turn to Flesh Productions is a theater company here in New York City. We've mm -hmm. been around since 2013. Mm -hmm. And we develop new plays in the heightened text with vibrant roles for women and those underrepresented in classical art. Mm -hmm. So basically, we help to make new Shakespeare plays for everybody that Shakespeare didn't write for. Okay. <laughs> And um, that's been a, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And New York is absolutely a, a great place for us to, to be doing that mm -hmm. because there are so many playwrights here and so many actors and honestly, so many multi-hyphenates. Um, a lot right. of the people that have worked with Turn to Flesh are themselves verse playwrights slash actors slash directors slash musicians slash this slash that. And I think there's something about verse drama that like requires the whole person. Okay, so, so let me just hit the pause button there for a second. Yeah. So for anyone who uh, is watching now or might be watching on the replays, uh, tell us what is verse drama. You know, for, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just throw my two cents in. Uh, yeah. for, for anyone who uh, knows Shakespeare, knows that Shakespeare is written in blank verse. There's mm -hmm. the iambic pentameter, but mm -hmm. there is also some, uh, there is also some um, prose in there as well. Uh, so uh, what, what for you is verse drama? Sure. So verse drama is any uh, piece of theater um, meant to be enacted by a second or a third party, right? Uh, meant to be viewed by a, a third party mm -hmm. that is written primarily or significantly in lines of verse, okay. which are uh, basically have line breaks that do not correlate necessarily to the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's modern verse drama where um, if you look at Lauren Gunderson's stuff, uh, if you look at uh, Mike Bartlett's stuff that's not Charles III, like his play mm -hmm. Cock, it's written mm -hmm. about half of it is in verse, where okay. he put a line break. It's not metered. It's free verse, mm -hmm. free blank verse, but it's uh, written with line breaks, which tells you the music, essentially. Mm -hmm. that the author is trying to get you to do. And verse drama is something that Shakespeare wrote in, but he wasn't the creator of it. I mean, verse drama has been around since, you know, since the Greeks, since the beginning of theater. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I was going to ask you. You're, yeah. you're, saying that you're, you're saying that your verse drama is, a, there's no meter to it. It's kind of free verse. No, it depends on, on what the play wants to be, right? Just okay. like any musical. So mm -hmm. a musical might want to be in Gregorian chant. It might want to be a rock opera. It might want to be a hip opera. Um, all the tools mm -hmm. are at your disposal as to whether, you know, this piece is very strictly in, let's say, um, trochaic tetrameter, um, or if it's much looser and freer, sort of like Murder in the Cathedral by T.S. Eliot is not mm -hmm. metered. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like Gregorian chant, but it's about the, the time period in which Gregorian chant would have been the primary music. So like that works. 
I, I remember studying some of those different uh, forms. There was the mm -hmm. Al Alexandrine verse, and there you know all kind of yeah. different variations. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's very interesting that that uh, there are people in the scene that are really taking that and continuing it and running with it. So so tell us about mm -hmm. uh, that exploration that you've done with uh, with Turn to Flesh. Yes, yeah. So that's what we've been doing with Turn to Flesh of putting on these new plays. Mm -hmm. um, that as as Keith was talking about before are from the points of view of people that Shakespeare couldn't write for, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And therefore to give as well these tools to people to sort of decentralize, to decolonize the same voices mm -hmm. over and over again so that people can write their stories and have it enacted. And you don't have to sort right. of force representation on mm -hmm. another play. It can be baked into the play that you're writing. Um, and so Hamlet to Hamilton, since because COVID happened, right. uh, suddenly we couldn't be on the stage. So uh, that's where Turn to Flesh went and uh, created a Zoom branch and an educational branch and an audio branch hmm. of which Hamlet to Hamilton is our flagship piece with interviews with other verse playwrights and um, with sort of a college course about how to take these tools and use them yourself. And yeah. <laughs> so what, what have been some of uh, Turn to Flesh's uh, flagship, should you say, productions over the past couple of years? Sure. Uh, well, we started with My Cupid and Psyche, mm -hmm. uh, which is about, I don't know if you know that myth, but you probably know Cupid, right? Great guy sure. love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Psyche is the girl that he falls in love with. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started with that at the Barrow Group Theater in 2014. Mm -hmm. And um, we did Jenny Lynn Bader's In Flight, which was a modern play in rhyming couplets. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's sort of Moliere, but like in New York City, which was very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and we were about to do uh, Chris Rivera's Our Own Odyssey, which is about a queer Latinx youth taking the story of the Odyssey, doing it now, and sort of what's a cyclops that you meet, you mm. know, in the world now. Yeah. So when we get to be back on the stage, we'll be doing that again. But in the meantime, what we have upcoming in 2021 on Zoom is finally we will have the staged readings of, we have a Cassandra play in the works oh, wow. by Becca Musser, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a queer feminist take on the Cassandra myth in verse gorgeous. Mm. And then Joe Rake has been working on a duology, uh, taking the Titus Andronicus story, but through the eyes of Aaron and Tamara. Mm. Uh, and he writes in strict iambic pentameter. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> that's, we have that's, a lot of cool things upcoming. That's that's a lot of wonderful stuff. Well, I mean, and and you yeah. kind of when when you were talking about the um, your your creating representation for mm. for uh, people that might not have been represented before. You know, it's it's this is one of the criticisms you hear all the time about Shakespeare is that yeah. you know uh, in every Shakespeare play, uh, let's say even the later romances, for example, there's there's three female characters and seventy five <laughs> male characters, and and oftentimes yeah. that one female character will be played by one performer who triples <laughs> all all the roles so but you also have to ask like are the female characters any good like ophelia right. and gertrude have almost nothing to say right. so you know they're more or less human handbags <laughs> um, right right you know right. Um, right. i've played lady m multiple times mm -hmm. but i've played more male characters in Shakespeare, like, you know, and it's great to play Brutus. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But um, actually, I was thinking about it today. One of the there was a time when I was in class playing mm -hmm. Isabella and I was in the middle of doing her speech. To whom shall I complain? Did I tell this? Who would believe me? Which is fine. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I want to say that as soon as Angela's tried to assault me. That sounds about right. But then, oh, perilous mouths that bear in them one in the selfsame tongue. Like that is, those are the wrong words, Bill. You gave me the wrong <laughs> words. And, and I need other language. Um, I need truer language. And he's dead. So like, and, and it also like, he's done his work. Let him rest. Um, <laughs> you know, that said, like, I mean, he's paid my bills for, for most of my life, you know, as an as a, uh, actor or as a director, as a producer. Mm -hmm. So I love him you know, good old Uncle Bill, but at the same time, I don't think he'd want this form in English, pardon me, to stop with him. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's definitely, <coughs> we, we, we were kind of having this discussion with Keith uh, earlier yes. about what, what limitations should there yes. be or can there be or do there need mm -hmm. to be 
on casting, whether it's uh, age, whether it's gender, whether it's uh, size, uh, size, well. uh, ethnicity, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting that you're taking some of these ability, neurodiversity, ability, ability. That's that's a big one. Mm-hmm. All of that. I'm working so, on a, an actually canonically queer R and J right now. You know, just so that it's not you know, forcing it or like hinting, oh, is Mercutio gay? It's like, yes, 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 calm down. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it just, just in Shakespeare's day, wasn't there just built into the way things were done, a level mm-hmm. of queerness? Because the, all the female roles were, they weren't played yes. by women. They were played by young boys who were playing mm-hmm. female roles. So there was a certain level of gender inversion just by yes. the nature of, so, so it's really interesting mm-hmm. that you're taking that and taking it to whatever the current day equivalent of that would be and what that represents for uh, the people that are in the New York scene. Uh, mm-hmm. so how, how have your works been received by the New York audience? Really well, really well. Um, I'll talk about the last two plays we did uh, because they're kind of connected. So in 2018, we did my play and rhyming couplets of French farce, The Other, Other Woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, In it, one of the main characters is in an emotionally abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, his tragedy is that by the end of the play, he doesn't leave it. Um, And what I saw, but, but, you know, um, I mean, it's a French farce, so it's about all a bunch of different relationships. When I was writing it, the focus of that was more on the woman that he then draws into an emotional uh, infidelity kind of with him in Mm -hmm. his attempt to escape. And I had so many women come up to me after that show and have language now to start talking about who was their Monsieur Valentine, who was the Mm. man that did them wrong, who was the man that then silenced them because Mm. they were in love with him and felt they had no right to speak or to grieve or to process and that they were the only ones that had ever been through this. And all of a sudden, there's a huge conversation that we're all having and they're able to use the language of the play to talk about what they've been through. But mm. what I saw at the same time, because we were performing in the alley configuration, because the whole thing's about gossip. So, you know, you could see the other audience members across the way. Mm-hmm. Um, with Monsieur Valentine, when he would say, uh, why don't they look at me and say, oh, that man's abused. All the men would like get really tense. And I realized mm-hmm. I hadn't quite shown them the way out. Mm. And so in the following play, which was last year's The Table Round and the Siege Perilous, which is the King Arthur duology. Mm-hmm. Um, Emily, I'll just, before oh, you go, sorry. I just, no, just want to let you know, we're yeah. down to our last 40 seconds. Last 40 seconds. Last 40 seconds. So you got bring, it. But bring us we home. Dealt with that. We dealt with that and men were coming up with tears in their eyes afterwards saying, I never got to talk about my abuse, but wow. you give me words too. So, like, it's worth it. It's worth that, it there you go. That, that's, that's what we're all here for. That's what we're here <laughs> mm-hmm. for, to, to connect with the audience and give them that, that outlook. All right. So, so you can find Emily, uh, Emily C.A. Snyder on uh, social media, Turn mm-hmm. to Flesh Productions on social media, and Hamlet mm-hmm. to Hamilton. Emily, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Same. much. Thank you. And all the best. Thanks, Thanks so much. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. New York Shakespeare on social media. Have a great night.